a lot of research went into this video and honestly the historical data says that the draft strategy i've been using this year is not only bad but it's horrible that i have no shot to win my drafts and you know i've drafted about 150 teams at this point so it may not be great news but i'm going to tell you what the historical data says and why i am willing to go through and ignore it and say i know better even though nine times out of ten that's a wrong bet to make, but before we get into it, make sure you go down there, drop a like on this video, subscribe to the channel if you play fantasy football, and of course, if you play fantasy football and want to get access to my 2023 fantasy football rankings, you can find that on flockfantasy.com, plus all your favorite content creators are there with premium content, and when you sign up with promo code flock, you're going to get 30% off any subscription, and yours truly will go through and make a podcast breaking down your 2023 fantasy football team. But let's go into this. And what I wanted to set out to do is find out where do league winning running backs come from? Not exactly what do they look like, obviously. I mean, you want to go through and you want to chase running backs that are going to see most likely 60 plus percent of the carries in their own backfield, plus possibly 10% of their team's target share. We kind of already know what a prototypical running back that's a league winner looks like. However, I want to look where these guys come from. Should we be drafting running backs in round one? Should we be drafting running backs in the middle rounds? Should we be drafting running backs in the later rounds? What do we actually do in these drafts? So what I did to find this research is I headed over to Rotoviz where they have gathered win rates from FFPC from 2017 through 2022. So we have five years of data that we can go through and look at. And I broke down where these guys were drafted by round and looked at players that had a win rate of 16.67% or higher. The reason I choose 16.67% is because that is going to be double the average. If you draft a player and he is completely average, he's not a bust, he's not a hit, you're going to win your fantasy football league with that player 8.3% of the time if all else is equal. Because keep in mind, I mean, one out of 12 teams are going to win your league. So one divided by 12 is 8.3%. So these are going to be the players that if you drafted, you had at least double the chance to win your league than if you did not. Now, round one, guys, apparently this is where all the league winning running backs come from, okay? Since 2017, you've had six running backs to actually have a win rate over 16.67%. These guys include Christian McCaffrey, 2019. Duh, we all remember that. We all remember Alvin Kamara 2020. Remember the man had six touchdowns in your fantasy football championship game. Maybe it's five, maybe it's six. Regardless, it was a lot. You had Jonathan Taylor in 2021. He was a late round one pick. You had Dalvin Cook in 2020. You had Le'Veon Bell in 2017 at the very top of your draft. And you had Austin Eckler in 2021 at the very end of the first round. So those were the guys that were dominant for where you drafted them. They gave you the most value. You had six players. So on average, one guy from round one was a league winner at the running back position almost every season. Dropping down to round two, you are going to see this begins to fall off dramatically. Now round two, you do have the highest win rate player on this list. You had Todd Gurley, who was actually a late second round pick in 2017 when the man just dominated. I mean, remember how bad Jared Goff was his rookie season. And then remember the step that they took with Sean McVay. That was the season where Todd Gurley was dominant and you had CMC 2018. So the second year in his NFL career as well with a win rate of 22%. So you only had two guys from the second round, third round, you had Aaron Jones in 2019, but that's it. Then dropping down again, if we're looking at round four, this is where we get to the middle rounds. And this is where we've historically heard these are the dead zone running backs. And yes, back in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, we were avoiding these guys in the middle rounds. In round four, you had zero players at the running back position be a league winning option since the year 2017. In round five, you only had one player and that guy was Josh Jacobs. Now it's wildly different where you were able to draft Jacobs. I was drafting on underdog all last year and I was able to get Josh Jacobs round seven. FFPC was going round five. But of course, 
If you want to get in drafts with me this year, you know we're drafting on Underdog every single day on the live stream. With Underdog, it's best ball, so there's no time commitment at all during the season. And when you sign up with promo code FLOCK, you are going to get 100% of your deposit match. You're going to get my 2023 fantasy football rankings. You are going to get a free trial to FLOCKFANTASY.COM, available in pretty much damn near every state. We're going to draft over 700 teams there again this year. We did last year. It may or may not have won 150,000. But anyway, let's continue to go through these middle rounds. Round six, you had zero league winning running backs. Round seven, you only had one, that guy being Tony Pollard this past season. Round eight, you only had one. That was Austin Eckler back in 2019. Round nine, you had zero. And round 10, you only had one, and that was Kareem Hunt back in 2017. So if we're looking at this data here, what does it tell us? It tells us what people were saying to do last year. What people were saying to do the year before, that you want to go through and you want to build your team around anchor running backs at the very top of the fantasy football draft, and then you want to be hammering in wide receivers in the middle rounds. This is actually what won Best Ball Mania team last year. Karain won $2 million by drafting Austin Eckler round one, Saquon Barkley round two, then wide receivers in the middle rounds. And honestly, I think that if you were maybe in a casual fantasy football draft, this is still the strategy you want to deploy, right? If you're just in a league with your high school buddies, your college buddies, where you only start one quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, and a flex, and you have a very shallow bench, if you're playing in that extremely casual fantasy football format, I would say that this historical data probably backs up that you should be drafting your running back round one. You should be following that up with the running back draft pick in round two. And if you can leave your draft this year, maybe with the combination of Austin Eckler and Derrick Henry, you should probably be pretty excited because you're going to get wide receiver value in the middle rounds. But why is this the exact opposite of what I've been doing in all my underdog drafts this year? Y'all have seen me do probably 100 plus drafts on the live stream so far. And you've seen that I am not taking these quote unquote league winning running backs in round one. I'm not doing it at all. I'm not even taking running backs at the end of the second round. What I've been doing is I've been hammering in anchor wide receivers and then grabbing running backs in the middle rounds, which is the exact opposite of what would have won fantasy football leagues in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022. I'm doing exactly what this data says not to. And the reason is, is fantasy football drafts, particularly on underdog fantasy at this time of the year, are completely different than we have ever seen before. What I did to prove this is I went through and I tracked ADP over time from 2017 2023, looking specifically at running backs drafted inside the top 10 rounds. Now, if we're going to go to round one running backs, these are going to be the amount of running backs that were in round one ADP in 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, all the way through drafts today. So 2017, five guys, 2018, nine, 2019, seven, 2020, 10, 2021, nine, 2022, eight. So you're seeing that pretty much on average, there have been eight to nine running backs drafted in round one since 2017. How does that look this year? There are three. Three, okay? If we go down to round two, this is where you're going to see why I'm really changing my strategy. 2017, you had 11 guys already off the board. 2018, 14, then 11, 14, 14, 14. So pretty much you had about, say, call it 13 running backs off the board in the first two rounds, pretty much in every draft since 2017. Well, in underdog ADP right now, you have seven. You have half that amount. Going down to round three, we are looking at 12 running backs off the board through the first three rounds in these underdog drafts, whereas throughout history, you've had on average about 18. Now, if we're going to go to round four, the middle rounds where historically it's been very, very bad to go through and draft running backs, you have 14 running backs off the board in underdog drafts by the end of round four, whereas historically speaking, we've seen anywhere from 20 to 24 with an average of about 22 to 23. And now what I really want to compare is the amount of running backs that we've had off the board through the first four rounds of your underdog draft compared to the first two rounds of drafts that we've seen in years past. Remember, if we go back to round two in drafts throughout recent memory, you have 14 running backs on average 
off the board by the end of the second round. And now if we were looking at these underdog drafts, you have that same amount off the board by the end of the fourth round. Wildly different scenarios. So if we're sitting here and going, okay, well, usually you can find a league winning running back if he is drafted inside, say the top six running backs, top seven running backs, or maybe top 10 running backs, which in the past, I mean, you would have to go through and you'd have to take that guy at the very top. In reality, those are now guys that we have access to in rounds three and four. In reality, I'm able to go through and I'm able to start my draft off and take Derrick Henry in the middle of round three in these underdog drafts, half PPR. I'm able to take Travis Etienne in round four. Sometimes I'm getting Najee Harris in round four. And if you would compare this to the historical data that you had looked at previously, these would be running backs that back in the day, back in 2019, back in 2020, they would be off the board by the end of the second round. So it is just completely different, the context that we are drafting in, which is in my mind, if we're able to get that same prototype of a running back that we used to have to spend a second round draft pick to go out there and get, if I'm able to get that running back in round four today, that means I want to be drafting these running backs in round three. I want to be drafting these running backs in round four. And honestly, well, yeah, I would love to add in Bijan Robinson if all else was equal in round one of my fantasy drafts this year. Knowing that I am really targeting the round three, round four RBs, such as Derek Henry, Brees Hall, Ramadre Stevenson, Travis Etienne, Najee Harris, it's difficult in underdog to go through and say, okay, I'm going to take a running back round one, round two, round three, round four. You can't do it. You have to grab wide receivers at some point. So it gets down to the opportunity cost question and saying, okay, do we just fall in line with what the historical data showed us or do we adjust to ADP? Do we go with Jamar Chase round one, then follow it up with Chris Olave in the second, Derrick Henry in the third, and possibly sometimes Travis Etienne, Jameer Gibbs in the fourth round? That is what I am doing, but I want to go back to what we were talking about earlier in this video. Of course, you have to be very much aware of your ADP. If you're going to be in a casual redraft league, understand that you may not have Najee Harris falling to in the fourth round. You may not have Travis Etienne making it there at the very end of the fourth. So maybe instead you could go through and you can say, well, Mason, you know what? I could actually get a player like Chris Olave. I could get T Higgins. I could get Devonta Smith in the third, fourth round in my draft. I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to hammer in Nick Chubb at the beginning of the second round here. That way I can take advantage of those wide receivers with an elite ceiling in the mid rounds where I'm not going to have running backs in that range. So I just want to be a little more nuanced than saying this is exactly how you have to draft your team. In reality, you really have to know the room that you are drafting in. You have to look at the ADP of the platform that you are playing on, and you have to make sure that you are putting yourself in a position to succeed while understanding the historical data and how this year is completely different than what we've seen in previous seasons in fantasy football. So I hope this was able to help you all out. Of course, if you have not done so already, Drop a like, subscribe if you play fantasy football. And as always, if you want to get in a draft with us, you can on Underdog Fantasy. Go sign up with promo code Flock. When you sign up with promo code Flock, you're going to get a 100% deposit match. Not only a 100% deposit match, but at the same time, you'll get my 2023 fantasy football rankings. You'll get a free trial to FlockFantasy.com. And if you're a member of FlockFantasy.com and you use promo code Flock on Underdog, make sure you go claim the free merch that you have in the Discord. Just need your address, essentially, where to send it. And also, make sure you get over to FlockFantasy.com and on your account page, there'll be a little section that says Underdog Username. Put your Underdog Username in that section. And just for completely free, we've hooked it up where you're going to get an extra $10 in your underdog account if you are a member of the flock on flockfantasy.com. But thank you so much. Really do appreciate y'all. Really hope you have a great day and really hope I get to see you in the live stream later today.